I'm working on this 1962 wheel horse model 552 garden tractor it's got a Kohler carburetor and a Kawasaki fuel pump on a Tecumseh engine this is part three of a multi-part series I'm making a guard to keep the mice out of this engine Last time I finished the part that I made and got it installed. And I got the starter housing bolted back on. Now I'm ready to put the carburetor on. It looks like this linkage was in the outer holes. Based on the scratched up paint on the governor arm. And the clean spot on the carburetor arm. Anytime you have the carburetor off, you should check the governor adjustment. The governor arm and the carburetor throttle arm should both reach their maximum travel at the same time. The governor arm's bottomed out, but the throttle arm could go farther if it wasn't for the linkage. Maybe I have it in the wrong hole. I need to go watch the video to see how it was when I took it apart. Yep, that's in the wrong hole. It was in the middle hole. I'm going to put it back like it was. I won't make you watch the whole thing. Here it is going back on in the right place. Now it's off a little bit. I want to loosen this screw. Hold the governor arm and the throttle arm at their full throttle position. And tighten the screw. You should feel them both bottom out at the same time. That looks like that should work. Now for the throttle cable. I'm going to make sure the throttle knob is pushed all the way in. And I'm going to set this so the throttle cable don't pull the carburetor arm out of the idle position. You don't want the throttle cable to be able to force the carburetor arm to idle. It's the governor's job to move the carburetor arm to idle when it's running. So you want to be able to flop that linkage around when the throttle is in the idle position. Now I'll do the choke cable. Make sure the choke's all the way open. And make sure the choke knob's pushed all the way in. When I tighten this clamp, I put upward pressure on the cable to remove all the backlash. And then tighten the screw. When you test it, make sure the choke's forced all the way open when the knob's pushed in. That looks good. I'm ready to put the fuel line on. And now for the air cleaner. Don't forget to torque the head bolts. 
my book says 13 to 16 foot pounds so I'm going until I see 16 I'm ready to put some gas in it it's totally dry because I drained it before storing it last time and I ran the engine till it used up what was in the carburetor. I left the air cleaner off just so I could see if gas comes running out of there. There's about a half inch of gas on the bottom. Before I turn on the fuel valve, I loosen the bowl a little bit to let the air escape. Then I tighten it back up when the fuel bowl gets full. I tightened it up and it's still rising. Yep, that gasket's not sealing. Here comes the gas. I'll try reseating the gasket. That's not working. There's the problem. The gasket's all dried up and shrunk. This is the cork material I used to make these. I'm going to draw some circles on here and cut it out. I test the outside diameter to see if it fits up into that recess where it goes. And I cut off more until it fits. That fits where it's supposed to go. Now I'll work on the inside hole. The size is not critical on this one. Just need a big hole in it. If you got the outside diameter right, it should push up in there and stay. I like using this type of cork gasket because it don't take very much pressure to seal and I don't have to put much pressure on this thumb screw. I'll turn the gas on, loosen the nut to let the air escape and you should get some fuel flow. I'll tighten it when the bowl fills up. That feels good. 
no leaks yet. I'm going to work on putting the battery in and check to see if I have any fuel leaks later. Always connect the negative terminal last. The theory is if you touch your wrench on the frame it won't cause a spark because the negative terminal is connected to the frame anyways. When you're removing a battery disconnect the grounded side of the battery first for the same reason. The valve is still on and I don't see any leaks. I'm going to pressurize the system for a bit. If it's going to leak, that should make it happen now. And it also pushes the fuel through the fuel pump valves and fills the carburetor bowl. If your needle don't seat properly, you'll find some fuel dripping out of the carburetor. That looks good so far. Let's see if it runs. I'll mess with the choke a bit to keep it going. That sounds pretty good. Don't see any fuel leaking out. The idle seems to be a little high, even with the knob pushed in all the way. If I push on the throttle linkage, it slows down some. That means the governor's not moving the linkage to idle. Remember, I'm always saying it's the governor's job to move that linkage to idle. So I'm going to change that adjustment a little bit. Pull the throttle about halfway out so I can get the linkages to full throttle position. The governor arm and the throttle arm should bottom out at the same time. Yeah, I can see that's off a little. That governor arm has some flex to it. So you can't put pressure on it when you're making the adjustment.
Let's try that. Okay, that was it. The governor's pushing that back to idle. And that's the way it should be. Just as a reminder, the reason I took this engine apart in the first place was to make that mouse blocking device back in there to keep mice from making a nest behind the flywheel. Nobody will ever notice it except for the mice. All that's left now is the air cleaner and the hood. Time for the test drive. Well, that's as far as I'm going this time, and here's what it looks like. It looks just like it did when I started, but without the mouse nest. That's it.